Good morning, folks. Welcome to another 10 Talk. Uh, we're excited that you're here. So grab your coffee because we're going to chat with Adam Petzl again. I hope you got to see his first 10 Talk. Um, Adam is a senior instructor in the curriculum instruction department at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. I'm Nancy Latham from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and Anna's going to talk about um, virtual math manipulatives, which, of course, the early childhood person in me was really excited uh, to think of any way that we can, especially in these remote environments, uh, give um, kids these more manipulative or hands-on uh, opportunities to really process, especially math. And I know, Adam, you're certainly not just talking about young children today. You're kind of no, talking about a pre-K-8 yeah. yeah. So show us some of your tools and resources. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just so that we can take a look at a few of these together here. And yeah, I'm excited to talk about this because in, 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 in virtual learning right now and remote learning, we want to keep kids engaged and keep learning meaningful. And for some teachers, maybe they had access to hands-on manipulatives in their classrooms and now don't <laughs> at kids at home, or just people haven't thought about the tools available in general to help kids learn math in some meaningful ways. So, you know, when we think of math manipulatives, there's so many out there. I mean, you can go, you can get books and order forms and spend a lot of money very quickly on a whole lot of different math manipulatives across many grade levels. But not new, I mean, for really decades now, people have been moving and, and coding to take these online in a virtual environment for many reasons. I mean, for access, for, for if you don't have, you know, all the sets for classrooms or just even the flexibility of the online environment. And so we want to talk about what's available today and some tips for pedagogy around that and just think about engaging kids with some of these online tools. Sound good, Nancy? Sounds good. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm looking back at a lot of my favorites from my classroom days. Yeah, I probably recognize that first slide, you know? I used <laughs> yeah. to love the little shape. Um, why can't I think of the name? The little shape ones, all the, the geo. Loved those. Geo board with the... Oh, the... I loved those. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, I just want to say real quick before we jump in, just to think about again the why behind the talk here. And I think it's important to note that when we talk about math manipulatives, either physical or virtual, we're talking about making math accessible to kids in ways. You know, math can be abstract, so we want kids to be able to have a connection experience with math, to see it, to make sense of it. And I think of manipulatives as sense-making tools for kids. You know, and, and the key thing here is making connections for kids so that the symbols connect to the models and the ideas really developing that conceptual understanding, which is a big part of math, the why behind things and not just following rules. But also they can be great for developing kids problem solving tools to have them think about ways to attack a problem or visualize a problem. And kids can see people attack it in different ways with manipulatives. It's a great way to show thinking. And we know in general, a lot of kids respond that it makes math more interesting or enjoyable just because they can be kind of fun, colorful, interactive, you know, flexible. And so all these are reasons to consider using these in our classrooms. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you know, online, Nancy, right now, there's actually, I mean, the, the, the amount of free tools is growing, and there's some you can pay for, but many are free, and most of these on here are totally free, and we're not going to do all of these today by any means, but all of these links are available in that top 10 resource list on LearnAway, so teachers can explore, and each of these are a little different. You'll find some are, you know, a little more simple for kid use, others are a little more of a wider range of, of possibilities for teacher use, and explore and see for different people. And I thought we'd take a look at a few of these and then talk a little pedagogy in the time we have. So that that'll be good. our Yeah, I would, I would love that. I love this idea of the manipulative. I, I just remember it always, to me, helped kids a lot through word problems, mm -hmm. whether you were asking them to solve one or develop one. Yeah. That use yeah, of manipulative. Exactly. I loved that. So yeah, these are yeah. great. I mean, big way of learning math is modeling, and, 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 and this gives us a way of modeling ideas to see representation in a way that can make sense to us, so, so I agree. So let's start with one that's kind of a, a fairly simple one for kids, you know, and, and this is called Toy Theater, and so I'm going to pull this up here. Um, toy Theater um, offers more than just math, but you can see here, just even on my screen, just a list of all the various types of tools we have access to, um, from fractions and clocks and place value charts, you know, all sorts of different color counters and bear counters that you were telling me a story about earlier, <laughs> and just money and, and many things here. And let's just take a look at an example of, for example, um, let's look at place value cards. You know, place value cards are a helpful way for kids to make sense of large numbers. You know, for example, here I'm just dragging up, you know, a number that students may have, 3,000, 452. And, you know, basically place value cards are neat because we're going to kind of build this number 
So for example, if I want to start with that 3000, I might choose to, you know, move my cards to start with three and realize this one here would be my 3000, you know, type card. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so for a 400 card, I, I could change that to begin with four and pick the right one. And it's a way of kind of building numbers, thinking about place value and, and how this works. And, you know, we can build numbers. But the nice thing about place value cards, Nancy, is that it allows us to kind of collapse them and see that really every number is just, <laughs> it's yeah. got all these different place values combined here to go through. And so for, for just very simple ways of just starting to look at place value and, and kind of see the hidden value of the different digits there. You know, we can see that as well more differently with things like the place value disks. You know, we can take the same, take the same number there. I think I said 3,452. And this is, um, is building that number in this case, you know, with maybe even chips thinking about what does that three represent? You know, be three of the thousand. And what does the four represent? You know, we see four of the hundred. So just, there's lots of different types of tools here. And this one, just showing a couple quick examples with the place value understanding, just to think about ways to see numbers and make numbers to take them apart. And so, so toy, you know, toy theater is just, it's got lots of different types of ways of just playing with decimals, fractions, geo boards, area perimeter, but kind of a friendly, more a simple tool, but a very friendly but it accessible has so tool. so many, so it many does. options. I mean, that's yeah. just really, and even if you, you know, you, we were doing the simple beginning concept of place value, but the same exact place value cards or any of the place value tools on here, when you get mm -hmm. to more uh, advanced, even mental math expectations, yeah. I could see you using those a little differently, but yeah. same concept, yeah, um, exactly. you know, it, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, wow. and so, so one that's a little different, the Math Learning Center is a very popular one right now. And so Math Learning Center is a little more robust in some of the, some of the uh, capabilities it has. Um, so let's take a look at that for a second. The Math Learning Center um, is here and it has, again, things like number clocks, uh, n clocks, number lines, base 10 pieces, fractions, geo boards. And let's take a look at one. Let's take a look at, um, oh, I think I want to start with number pieces for a second, which is basically some base 10 pieces and it allows an open web app or even downloading for use on digital devices. And so here's one that's just, it's a little bigger screen on the bottom. You see lots of choices here. And on ones like this, usually there's a place to learn about it. Like in the bottom right, there's an eye for information. <laughs> and if one clicks on that, you can learn a lot more. But just for a quick demo here, I'm gonna change the colors. Um, we could take a look, for example, maybe we're looking at something, you know, and taking a look at um, something like, oh, 326. I'm just using the, the writing tool and you can put text in as well. Um, uh, minus 47, you know, per se. And, you know, this is using these tools here. I'm gonna turn off my pen. We can drag over and take a look at this build 326. That piece may be a little large. So again, there's options to like, it's robust. You can shrink things down, you know, and, and start building our pieces here. And again, just like we had the, the models in the classroom, we can go ahead and build, um, build our, our pieces Oops, as we, as we go through. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just take six of those. And again, on the bottom, there's some things like duplicate tools and things like that. And, um, you know, if we had 326, you know, again, we can do lots of this. We can actually build numbers. We can do subtraction you know, as we go yeah. through. And, you know, if I was going to subtract it, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'll show you. Obviously, we don't have enough tens, Nancy, right? Right. <laughs> what we can do is like, you know, we can take 100 and using the breakup tool down below, you know, I can take that up. And by breaking it up, you know, it allows me to break apart my, my 100 blocks here into tens. And then I could take away some of these, move them to the side or, or, or trash them. And later, I might need to break up this into ones, you know, to get more of those. And, and again, it allows us without having all the blocks and pieces um, in front of us, we can do the same type of work with base 10 blocks here. Yeah. And there's so many nice tools here on this one, for example, with number frames, uh, we can go back and take a look at, uh, take a look at, you know, different 10 frames and, and tools here to be able to, um, to be able to, uh, you know, be able to build counters and do addition, subtraction, benchmarking the 10, um, all sorts of different things here, you know, to go through. And ones like this, they have sharing icons for pictures to go through. And there are so many different out there. This is one called Polypad. This is a different website that you can see just has drag and drop manipulatives that we can go in, all kinds of writing, sharing tools. There's just a lot of great things here, Nancy.
Wow. What I want to say here is, is that when we think about it, though, I think about using in a classroom, you know, teachers, what we can do with this is think about, obviously, teachers can use these for teacher instruction to model things, to have discussions with students, to demonstrate tool use. You may want to show students how to use some of the buttons to go through, you know, but then students have full access to playtime, to explore with the tool, to solve a teacher post problem, to share their thinking. You know, they can snap a picture of their screen or, or some of them have downloading tools to even send it into the teacher for homework or assessment. And one teacher, I wanted to share an example of one teacher that I saw Nancy that did a really neat thing. This is Google Slide. And what she did is she took, a, she took links of certain manipulatives on the outside and during her classes would pose a question in the middle and allow her students to choose a tool <laughs> by clicking on it you know, in solving it and being able to share their screen or take a snapshot. You know, for example, here is about comparing fractions and I might choose the fraction strip tool and, and from the slide, she would link it where they could, they could come here and work on comparing, you know, comparing the fractions they were supposed to do. So, so yeah. just, you know, I know it's a lot and a little bit of time, but just there's so many great things out there. I just encourage teachers to take a look at the, the links there and begin thinking about how these could be incorporated in their classrooms. Yeah, absolutely. So now, Adam, can a lot of these be, um, I, I assume that a lot of them work very well on like a tablet or an mm -hmm. iPad. Yep, so, yep. Um, the vast majority cause I, do. Because I think as schools get better at this and knowing that we're headed into more remote possibilities, at least for the next academic year, if not, you know, we've now learned some lessons mm -hmm. about how this can happen, right? So it's forever changed our instruction. I mean, I think yeah. we have to think about, so um, what, what's interesting to me is as schools get better and perhaps are purchasing tablets that can go home and come back uh, as children go in and out of remote instruction, a teacher could actually load for the week ahead very specific things like this, mm -hmm. which is even more helpful to the parents at yeah. home. And um, certain, ones, certain ones like the Math Learning Center don't need internet access either. Cert certain ones oh. do, but other ones you can download an app to the, to the tablet where if you know, kids could still access it even if they didn't have internet in their homes. See, and that's huge for, yeah. a te no, for teachers to know that, you know, to even be able to file these resources away for themselves in, uh, with that kind of, you know, these can be downloaded and they don't need access uh, because we know mm -hmm. that's huge. And so um, thank you, Adam. These yeah. were great. Um, you know, I think also we could have talked a whole nother 10 minutes just <laughs> on linking these up and having the child <laughs> replicated in the home with real things, right? Yep. There's all yep. fun, cool things to do, uh, but I appreciate it. So explore these uh, manipulatives in the top 10 list, these websites that give you virtual manipulatives. And we would love on our feedback page to hear your good ideas ideas and how you used them. Definitely. Teachers, um, we would absolutely love that. So thank you, Adam. All right. Thanks, Nancy. Appreciate it.